Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games and day 17 of the 30 day challenge. And today I was going to just chill out, work on the rhinos and the predator, get as much as I could done. But then once I got into it, I just couldn't stop. So it's another late one. I couldn't stop until I finished. So I managed to finish the two rhinos, which can also be the razorbacks and the predator today. And now I've got a real load going on on the table. Let's have a look. Yeah, that way you can see there's quite a bit there. So let's head over. We'll have a look at what's going on. And then I'll talk you through the different ways I can put together the Razorback and the Rhino, how I can mag how I've magnetized and can change the weapons on the Predator. And then I'll just show you quickly the recipe I use to paint it. So let's have a look at the table and then we can catch up with everything right up to day 17. So here we go, here we are back at the table and I've changed things around a bit as the army's really starting to get going now. So on the back tray I've just got all the things that are waiting to be painted and then all the painted models I've moved to the front. And now with those two rhinos or razorbacks and the predator, it really does look like an army. So there's quite a few points going on here. I haven't towed it up actually, but tomorrow I'll add it up and see where we're at points wise painted. But really happy to get these three models done. I didn't plan on finishing them all today. I thought I'd just get as far as I could with them and then continue tomorrow. But I just got into it. I got really carried away and I thought I've got to just keep going until I finish. Let's have a look at them up close and I'll go through some of the decisions I made when I was painting and just show you quickly the method I used to paint them. But here's the Predator and this is uh, one I've been looking forward to having for ages. It's an awesome model and it certainly holds up even for its age, um, but really pleased with it. I wasn't sure whether to paint that panel in the front in the yellow colour or not. And I looked at the Ultramarines one and it's just all blue. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure whether to do it or not. But let me know what you think. Should I do it or should I just leave it this colour? I'd love to hear what you think. I decided not to do any like weathering on it. I thought I'd go for a dry brush first and just see what it looks like. And I like the way it looks with the kind of frost and the ice at the front. I imagine as it's moving through, all that snow and ice is hitting it. And so it's really going to be all frosty there. And here's the guy on top with the bolters getting ready for some action. But I can build this in two different ways. So I can put the las cannons on there if I want to, the heavy bolters on the side. So and I've got las cannons on there already. So they're all magnetized and so really easy just to swap over any time I like. So this is going to be really fun when we start playing some games and building some army lists because we can look at how the different weapons play out and the different point values and things like that. So you can see here that the different weapons just pop on and off and then when it's assembled in the other way, it just looks really cool. So you can have the dude on top or close the hatches and steam into battle that way. And then alongside the miniatures, it all ties in with this frosty theme. We've got the two Razorbacks, which can also be built as Rhinos. And I was really surprised at how much I like these models. They're great fun to build, great fun to paint. I think they look pretty cool as well. I just got them for the use, really. But, and you know, really surprised with how much I like them. I think they're great models and really fun. So, yeah, I'm loving these. And again, these can be swapped over so I can have the Rhino or the Razorbacks, as you see here, or mix it up. Have one Rhino, one Razorback. I think that'd be fun, especially for like a combat patrol level. And then I also put some little magnets in the missile launchers. So I put a tiny magnet in there and then I can pop that on and off if we want to as well. So I think it's really good just for that. I think it's five points to be able to use this once per battle. I think it's going to be worth having. And here we can see up close that frost hitting it again in the front. And I was reading somewhere, I can't remember where it was, about the idea that you're viewing the models mostly from like three feet away. And so, yeah, I've gone with that quite bold dry brushing but I think when you look at it from a distance it really kind of does work and then at the bottom it's just a little bit heavier as you can see and then it fades out as we move up just to give the idea that it's closer to the ice and all that f that snow is hitting it as it's moving along. I'm really glad I got two of these as well because I think as I said just now having a combat patrol level 500 points is going to be really fun having two of these with some of the different units inside i could really see that being quite good to play and so yeah look really looking forward to that but also very happy to have these three painted and this is a big chunk of the army done now really is downhill from here on i think before I did the dry brush and I did some highlighting with just a lighter grey. So the one on the left is highlighted and the one on the right is dry brushed. And it did make a huge difference doing that dry brushing. 
I tried to keep the painting as straightforward and easy as I could for this. And so I went along with pretty much the same recipe I used for the different units of Wolfguard and Grey Hunters. So I put one coat of Agrax Earthshade all over and it's already been primed with the standard Mechanicus Grey Spray. And I tried to get this coat of Agrax Earthshade nice and even and so did that all over the model. And then as you can see there, it's as even as I could get it and then I just let that dry thoroughly before moving on to the next stage. And then I did a really rough overbrush where I didn't like do it's not dry brushes it's not painting it on thick I'm just like taking some of the paint off on the kitchen towel and then trying to do mostly downward strokes all over the model and then once that dried I went over and did the same thing again mostly downward strokes and then that like thickened it up it also saw some of that Agrax Earthshade coming through then and making it look a little bit grimy but I didn't want it to be too like gross so I think this is just enough and got the same effect as I did with the models and then once I'd finished that I just touched up some of the areas and then went over it like I'm doing here with a dry brush just doing the highlighting around the edges so I'm just trying to catch those edges really rough and ready um, I needed a brighter color I had the Fenrisian grey here uh, it's just not light enough but I think a brighter one would have been better but then I did the dry brushing with the white to give that frozen effect. And this is where it really came to life. So I could have just left it as it was, but I think this really helped. It also meant I didn't have to do any highlighting on the metal. So I cut out a stage there. And so, yeah, really happy with this frosty look. It's almost like a good way to cover some things up, get an extra bit of highlighting. And um, yeah, I think it fits in with the theme. So why not go for it? And then here, just put lots on the front. So I'm trying to imagine the brush strokes going in the same direction and hitting it as the ice and snow would hit it as it's moving along. So really thinking about that, trying to catch those edges. There's still, as I'm watching these videos, little bits I need to go and touch up, like the lights there and also some of the badges. And then just going for that fade, going a bit heavier at the bottom and then lighter as I reach up towards the higher parts. And I'll do some proper videos, one for the Rhino, one for the Predator, so you can see exactly how it's painted, all the paints I've used. So that'll be coming soon, probably late this week, maybe even next week. So yeah, really cool. But there we go, that's ready. And now we've got almost a whole tray full of miniatures painted up and ready to go. So really looking forward to tomorrow. I'm determined to have a day where I don't do as much and I'm not gonna have as much time to spend on it tomorrow. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just pick out one thing Maybe Logan Grimnar, that would be quite fun to do and just focus on that and, and chill out a bit tomorrow. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and really looking forward to tomorrow getting stuck in to that Logan Grimnar, I think is going to be the good way to go. It'd be fun to have one of the characters made and it looks so cool in that chariot. So yeah, I think that'd be good. And it's another big model as well. So that's going to fill up some space. And um, yeah, we're almost there. So not too much painting to go now. So I'm also going to start thinking about the terrain piece. And I've got some foam and some other pieces together over the past few days for that. In fact, saying that, I might even leave Logan Grimnar tomorrow and maybe just start on the terrain just to have a break from the painting. Because it's been pretty full on getting those blood claws, then getting the... Um, grey hunters done and then the rhinos and the predator today it's quite a lot so yeah i might do something completely different and then i won't have to concentrate as much so we'll wait and see so yeah tomorrow it could either be logan grimnar on the table or you might see some terrain and the makings of it starting to be built so yeah let's wait and see but hopefully i'll see you back here tomorrow and thanks so much again for watching and follow along with the series please like if you like it subscribe if you haven't already and please hit that notification bell to join me next time on tabletop skirmish games I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below. <laughs>